Hi, and welcome to the very first episode of Gary Talks. In this episode, it's Gary Talks TV. Actually, I'll be talking my top 10 TV shows of 2023. This was a really good year for television. Making a top 10 list wasn't super simple. Sure, there were some shows that I knew were going to be there, but there were some that were all together right around that 10, 9, 8, down to 11, 12, 13. So it took quite a bit of time, but I think I figured it out. And we'll start with number 10, which was Star Trek Picard. Now, I'm more of a Star Wars guy than a Star Trek guy, but I do love Star Trek. And I really love Star Trek The Next Generation. Those first two seasons of Picard, they were okay. First season, a little better than the second season. But season three, they really nailed it. Captain Jean-Luc Picard becomes a wanted man as he steps outside of Federation rules to answer the distress call of Dr. Beverly Crusher. And of course, it turns out that the only people he can count on are his old crew of the Starship Enterprise. It was a lot of fun to catch up with some old friends we haven't seen in years. But at the same time, this wasn't a simple nostalgia trip. It was an exciting space adventure that felt like some of my favorite episodes of The Next Generation. If this truly is the end of the Picard journey, they went out perfectly. I just wish more legacy shows, if you're going to do something like this, do a sequel show, follow this roadmap. It was perfection. Number nine was Apple TV's Shrinking. Now, I only got Apple TV this year to see Ted Lasso, which I assumed would be at the top of the list. Spoiler alert, it's not in the top 10. I wasn't a big fan of this season. But while waiting for Ted Lasso episodes, we decided to watch Shrinking, and it blew me away. Shrinking comes from Bill Lawrence, creator of Scrubs, Jason Siegel, and Roy Kent himself, Brett Goldstein. It follows Jimmy, a therapist whose grief over the loss of his wife has completely wrecked his life. As a way to come to terms with his own feelings and struggles, he becomes far more involved in the lives of his patients than he should, leading to some really funny and moving episodes. Shrinking was able to walk that fine line between comedy and drama that so many shows can't. Plus, it also looked to be the most fun Harrison Ford has had since Last Crusade. Shrinking, one of the best shows on TV. Number eight, this is a little bit of a cheat because all the episodes haven't aired yet, but number eight is... Fargo. Fargo has always been one of the best shows on TV. I've loved it. I love the, the drama, the violence, the comedy, the odd characters. Whenever they initially said they were going to do a TV version of Fargo, which is pretty much a perfect movie, I was like, no way, can't happen. Season one, one of the best seasons of any show I've ever seen. Noah Hawley made a great show with Billy Bob Thornton. It was fantastic. Season two, even better. Season 3, not quite as good, but I also really enjoyed it. And then came Season 4. I was not a fan of Season 4 of Fargo. I don't know if it was moving the show to Kansas City or what, but it just didn't resonate with me. Season 5, though, they're back. For this season of Fargo, we are back in more recent times as it takes place in 2019. And remember, this is totally based on a true story. Dorothy is a housewife and mom in a small town in Minnesota, and other than a horrible mother-in-law, her life is pretty nice. Until a run-in with police exposes her hidden past. And who is in that past? John Hamm as Sheriff Roy Tillman. This, of course, leads to all the violence, dark comedy, and strange characters we have come to expect from Noah Hawley and Fargo. If all the episodes of Fargo had aired, it could move higher than eight on my list, but as it stands right now, Fargo is my number eight show of the year. Number seven is The Last of Us. I'm not a big video game guy. I mean, when I try to play, I'll, you know, my, my character will get over in the corner and I can't get him to turn around. There's too many buttons and things and, you know, I'm a joystick guy. Maybe I can do a little button mashing, but all these new video games, I can't figure them out. The Last of Us is a great example of that. I kept hearing how great the game was. It was like living in a zombie movie. So I bought the game for the PS4. And 
While the visuals were great, I couldn't play it. I'm just like in the corner of a laboratory while monsters and zombies and mushroom heads are eating me alive. So when a TV show was coming out, I was kind of interested in it, but also video game adaptations have not been great. But this one was really, really good. The Last of Us is about 20 years into a pandemic that turns people into, well, let's pretend they aren't zombies, but come on, they are some mushroom-headed zombies. Pedro Pascal plays Joel, who has lost everyone in his life except for his brother, who has disappeared. He's tasked with taking a young girl who might have the answer to the cure across the wasteland of the country to scientists who might be able to use her to save the world. And maybe he can find his brother along the way. One of the great things about this show was the character work. There would be episodes that took a far turn from the narrative and focused on other characters to show how this new world has changed them. And of course, I have to mention the best episode of the run, which was episode 3, Long Long Time, all about Bill and Frank. It was able to weave this new story into the story of Joel and Bella, and was one of my favorite episodes of any show this year. Since I've never played the games, I'm not sure what to expect from season 2, but I am excited to see it. Number 6 is on FreeV. I know, it used to be IMDB TV, it's on Amazon, no one really knows what it is. But the show is called Jury Duty. Way back at the beginning of reality TV, there was a show called Joe Schmo. And it was a show where everyone was in on the joke except one guy who didn't know that this wasn't a legit reality show. I seem to remember it being decent, but they never really nailed it. Jury Duty took that concept and hit a home run. The concept of this fake reality show is that a documentary crew are following a jury in a small case to show everything that goes into deliberations. But everyone, including James Marsden as himself, are actors, except for Ronald, who has no idea everything he is going through is staged. This show shouldn't work as well as it does, but somehow, thanks in a large part to the improvisational skill of the actors, is a complete laugh riot. The glue that holds it all together, though, is Ronald. Talk about perfect casting. He's an actual decent human being who looks out for his fellow jurors and rolls with all the punches that comes his way. If a different person had been cast as the lead, this show wouldn't have been as amazing. But as it stands, it's something that is worth trying to find out what the hell Freebie is in order to see it. If it were a reality show, it wouldn't have been my number one reality show of the year, though. That is our number five show of the year, Squid Game The Challenge. Squid Game The Challenge is not only the best reality show of the year, it is, without a doubt, one of the best reality shows of all time. I loved the Squid Game scripted series, I thought it was fantastic, and then I heard, you know, they're going to make this reality show version of it. Well, first, when I heard that it was going to be called The Challenge, I was like, is Johnny Bananas going to be getting shot by a doll or something? But it, words can't even describe it. If you haven't seen it, you have to check this show out. And as a guy who works in reality TV, I really appreciate what they do with this show. They take characters that you think, oh, because of the amount of interview time they're going to have, they're definitely making it to the end. And then they don't. And it's shocking. And you don't even realize it that they've already started introducing other characters that now you fall in love with. Now you follow through to the end. Much like the scripted show, we see 456 people playing a number of children's games in order to be the last man or woman standing to win the biggest prize in TV history, over four and a half million dollars. We get some games taken directly from the scripted show, like Red Light, Green Light, but we also get some twists and turns, which includes the Battleship episode, which was the most dramatic episode of TV this year. Imagine making Battleship that exciting. The only thing about Squid Game that didn't really work for me was the finale. After everything, all the build-up, I mean, they made Battleship feel like the most dramatic moment of the year for me. But for the whole thing to end on, rock, paper, scissors, kind of lame, kind of a letdown. But other than that, this show was perfect. Number four for the year for me was Barry. I know a lot of people didn't care for this season, and it really has strayed from where it was. You know, it seemed like season one was 90% comedy, 10% dark. By the time we get to this final season of Barry, it's not really a comedy at all, and it's 100% dark. It begins with Barry in prison for his crimes, and by the time we get to the end, we have dealt with time jumps, betrayals, loss of loved characters, and one of the most shocking endings I can remember. If you watched season four and didn't love it, I say give it another shot. Maybe do a full rewatch of the complete series, and I think you might enjoy it a little more this time. 
My number three show of the year is The Fall of the House of Usher. I don't know if you remember too much about Edgar Allan Poe from high school. I remembered some. I know a lot from the Vincent Price, Roger Corman movies. But this show worked splendidly. Mike Flanagan is always fantastic. I mean, I loved the Haunting series, and I loved Dr. Sleep. But this is probably his best work. This very loose adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe focuses on the rise of power of siblings Roderick and Madeline Usher, as they go from illegitimate children of a powerful man to running one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. And of course, maybe they didn't do all this on the up and up. Now something dark and evil has come to make things right by killing off the next generation of ushers. But each episode also is like a self-contained different Edgar Allan Poe short story or poem. It weaves all these characters from all of his works together. It is simply brilliant, and I cannot wait to see what Mike Flanagan does with my favorite series of all time in book form, The Dark Tower. My number two show of the year was my favorite comedy of the year, and it stars Baby Billy. That's right, Righteous Gemstones. This season, John Goodman's patriarch Eli has turned over his megachurch to his three children, and of course, they can't get along, and things go from bad to worse. Add in the fact that Eli's sister and her grown boys have come to Eli for help as her husband Peter has put together a militia with some revenge on his mind. Gemstones. Like any of the Danny McBride HBO, I'm sorry, Max shows, is very vulgar and at times violent. But guess what? I love vulgar and violent. Toss in some Baby Billy's Baba Bonkas, and while this wasn't my favorite gemstone season, it's still heads and shoulders above any other comedy currently out there. And I'm really glad the show is continuing, and we will get another season. And now for my top show of the year, which I like to be different. I like to choose things that other people aren't choosing, but I kind of have to agree with what a lot of critics are saying. The best show of this year, 2023, was Succession. There are so many of these fantastic shows that just don't stick the landing, but Succession did. This final season follows the Roy family as they're dealing with the acquisition of Waystar, as well as ATN News taking a more pronounced role in who will be elected as the next president of the United States. And through it all, Kendall, Shiv, and Roman continue to, at times, work together and, at times, backstab each other to try to take control from their father, Logan. I did mention Connor, who really just wants to be part of the family and maybe get 1% of the votes in a run for president. This season, like all the others, was stolen by the bromance of the year, Tom and Cousin Greg. While I'd love a spinoff following these two, I'd also hate to ruin what was an amazing and flawless series. Succession is probably now one of my favorite shows of all time, and this final season was my top show of 2023. Thanks for watching another episode of Gary Talks. My next episode is going to be Gary Talks Music as I'll go over my top 10 albums of 2023. Thank you. See you soon. Gary Talks TV. Gary Talks TV. Gary.